And so next, I would like to redirect our to our next youth panelists, Lee Khan, Sophia Paula, and Oran O'Sullivan, moderated by Teen Tech SF Vice President Parini. So hi everyone, welcome to the youth panel. We have Ali Khan, who is a UN Climate Summit Rep and LEDA scholar. Sophia Rano and Kevin Rano Hernandez, who are youth versus apocalypse student leaders. And Aaron O'Sullivan, who is with the Carl Martin Green Team co-president and a member of the Citizens Climate Lobby, Bay Area Youth Lobby Lobbyist Initiative and Beyond Terra. So if we could just spotlight everyone. I think everyone's spotlighted. Okay, so hi everyone, go ahead and introduce yourselves, um, where you're calling from, what grade you're in, and a little bit about the organizations that you guys are involved in. Oh, uh, hi, I'm Aaron O'Sullivan. Uh, I am a junior in high school at Carmont High School, and uh, <clears throat> I'm part of a few organizations, as you heard, uh, Beyond Terra, which has an emphasis on increasing biodiversity uh, in the Bay Area. Uh, my school's green team, which is uh, targeting more local action. Uh, Citizens Climate Lobby, which aims at more of the political side. So we lobby to politicians and hold rallies. Um, and then a similar thing with the Bay Area Youth Lobbyists Initiative, uh, <clears throat> basically tackling the more political side. Here. Hello everyone, I'm Ali. I am a 19 year old high school senior. I'm from Chicago. Um, so I started, I founded the Mick Book Club in my high school, which is a organization centered around youth that are pushing for environmentally sustainable um, uh, actions in our school. I'm also part of um, an organization for Chicagoland area called It's Our Future, where this organization goes to councils, to boards to advocate for um, green green reforms in, or in their communities or cities, and also write newspapers and articles about the uh, severity of the climate crisis and what we have to do and what we can do on our end. And that same organization has sponsored me to um, attend the UN Climate Summit, where I was a youth representative, to learn about what youth are doing around the world in their communities and what delegates are trying to do to mitigate the uh, crisis in their own countries and to take it back to my um, country, uh, my communities, and to see what we can enact in our from our own end. Thank you so much, guys, for being here to talk about the great work that you do. So I wanted to ask, how did you both get involved with climate action and what is it that inspired you? Um, either one of you can go first or if you want me to. Yeah. Oh, uh, I can go first, I guess. Um, so I guess going back to what inspired me, it was actually a pretty specific event. I. I uh, used to spend a lot of time at my local library in Belmont, and one day I just noticed this random book, uh, and it was written by Al Gore. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about it. Um, it's called An Inconvenient Truth, and that's exactly what climate change is. It's something that not a lot of people want to acknowledge as a problem, but we have to deal with it either way, and this is going to be the biggest fight uh, our generation has to face and we have to be the ones to solve it as it's going to impact us the most so that kind of inspired me to action just knowing that if i want a future for myself and for my own generation then i'm myself and uh, other youth are going to have to be the ones to enact that change that we want to see um, <clears throat> and i guess how i got involved was um, things kind of just fell into place after I joined my school's green team. Uh, they shared a bunch of resources and it was really just making that effort to reach out to people. Um, <clears throat> you know, these organizations are all out there and so you just have to make that initial contact and people are willing to, you know, we're all trying to work together on this. So people are willing to, you know, let you join and it's, yeah, these resources are out there if you just make the time to look. So for me, when I was a freshman, um, my teacher, who was my club sponsor for the Mikva Club, she was talking about um, the severity of the climate crisis and how it's impacting youth and also her frustrations to 
our city and to the official government officials that are take the, that are not doing any action. And so it started to evolve from there where then I start, uh, started to learn more, just like read articles about the climate crisis and then leading to founding the club that I started. And yeah, and then from there, it's like once you once I started the club, organizations from my high school, from other high schools also reached out. So we're trying to collaborate with other projects and this organization that sponsored me. They're also helping us on a product on a project that led us to um, have me represent the um, our district at the UN summit. Um, also, my apologies. It looks like I skipped Sophia, who doesn't have um, her video on, so it looks like we can't spotlight her. But if you wanted to, if you're here, if you wanted to introduce yourself, and um, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and do that. Sure. Hi. I'm so sorry, guys. My camera is broken. I'm not sure how to fix it. Um, maybe you guys could help me with your tech climate. <laughs> initiatives. But um, anyways, hi, I'm Sophia. Um, I'm from Youth vs. Apocalypse. I'm part of the lead circle. And I'm also currently running our um, anti BlackRock campaign. I am native and Mexican. And I am part of Youth vs. Apocalypse, um, or a climate justice group from the Bay Area. I'm from the East Bay and I'm a senior in high school. and amongst other current issues. Oh, no. Sorry, could you guys hear me? I think you lagged out for a moment there. I wasn't sure if that was just me. I'm so sorry. My connection's the worst. Where did I leave off? Uh, I think you were talking about your or the organizations you were a part of, if you wanted to repeat that part. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm part of Youth vs. Apocalypse. We're um, a climate justice organization hoping to amplify voices of youth of color. Um, we have multiple different campaigns like hip hop and climate justice, um, as well as divest casters. And the campaign that I'm a part of. Um, I think I will also ask the next question to the panelists. What do you guys, what do you think is the most uh, significant accomplishment that you have made in your work? I can uh, start off if you don't mind. Um, so for me, it's this past summer where my club's working on an initiative to install solar panels at our high school. And as we were working to um, towards our goal, the Director of Energy and Sustainability of Chicago Public Schools, which is the third largest district in the nation, um, she came and she started to help us uh, connect with other organizations, other um, so trying to help us like with the fund funding and everything to sort of install these solar panels and help reach our goal. So at the end, we've um, secured the $13,000 $13, grant, but the district rejected the funding. However, we recently found out that um, she had made like, I think she got the funding to install sol solar, pa solar panels at our high school. And in addition to that, she has invited me to speak to the Board of Education at Chicago, at Chicago Public Schools to advocate for the Chicago Public Schools Go Solar project, which will essentially install solar panels um, on all schools in the district. Oh, wow, that's great. Um, for, for me, I'd say um, this past summer, uh, this past August, uh, one of my organizations, uh, Citizens Climate Lobby, we organized a climate rally in San Mateo. Uh, it was called Students for a Carbon Fee and Dividend, uh, which is essentially a tax on carbon. Um, <clears throat> so basically, we were able to get a few hundred people uh, to rally in San Mateo. Um, and we even invited uh, some big name politicians like our state senator, Josh Becker, uh, a few keynote speakers. Uh, congressman so it was great you know we got to reach a lot of people um, it was great seeing you know so many people who care about climate change 
as well as our politicians as at the end of the day you know they're deciding climate policy that affects us all so yeah that's so cool Aaron um I guess I could go next if that's okay with you guys um so Agnes, are you okay to help support Sophia with being her voice? Yes, yes. Super, thanks. Okay, so I guess while we're waiting on Sophia's answer, um, I can ask you guys, for the amazing work that you guys did, what were the sort of steps that it took for you to be able to get these projects approved and to get started on them? And how did you receive backing from others as well? Did you see that your project would take off like this? Also, like any tips as well, if you wanted to give to students who wanted to do this kind of work as well, you can answer that as well. OK, so for me, when I started the club, we were actually working on another project to bring beehives to add vibrance to our high school, but that was before COVID happened. So after COVID happened, we um, had to halt our work. And then over this past summer, we, we did the solar panel grants. But I think before we had to really like talk to you and create presentations and posters around the school to gather more um, students that are interested in this kind of work so that they can also take part of what we're doing to impact our school. And it's just all about reaching out and making posters, not even posters, like you can make presentations and share them with your school or ask teachers to, to talk to talk to, to, to talk to their classes about such um, uh, clubs that are going on if you need anyone to help with your work and push it forward. Um, for our grant, we, it's, I think my teacher reached out to the, to some uh, organizations and then from there we started to type the grants and write, write about them to uh, uh, obtain them uh, and to get approval. So um, my school, my high, all high schools in Chicago have a local school council, which is like a, like a sort of like a, a board with like teachers, parents, uh, community members and the principal and one student representative and I'm the student representative of mine. And so it was really, um, for me, it was rel relatively uh, not difficult to advocate for this project and to get approval from the administration considering that um, they were also very interested in the project. So that's also, um, that was also very um, helpful on our part. Um, so for backing, um, we did, since it's like the district um, responsibility, there was like no politicians involved. To, to obtain these grants or these projects for, for approval, but it was from the officials. So we got uh, approval from the CPS officials until the vendor happened. But then after that, we had successfully obtained the funds after the director of energy and sustainability um, reached out and got the funds to install them from CPS themselves. I don't know, I, I can go next for Sophia. Um, she typed in the chat that the most meaningful experience I've had in climate justice is the first climate strike I've led in San Francisco. It was for stop line three, which is especially important to me. Oh, well, hi, I'm Sophia. Um, I'm part of the youth versus apocalypse and the leader of the divest black rock campaign. I'm also one of the social media coordinators. The most meaningful experience I've had in climate justice is the first climate strike I've led in San Francisco. It was for Stop Line 3, which is especially important to me. It was so amazing to see so many powerful youth stand up for what they believe in. Yeah, so as I'm sure uh, Sophia knows, when you're planning a climate strike or a climate rally, a lot has to go into it other than just, you know, telling people to gather in a place at one time uh, you have to get permits uh, you know you have to <clears throat> reach out to people make sure that people are actually going to come uh, make sure that it's safe that you have like a designated route and everything so when uh, my group was planning our rally uh, back in august it took about a year of planning actually to get it all together uh, especially having to reach out to politicians um, so kind of like what ollie was saying as well just like reaching out to people and networking, because uh, a lot of the time it's not necessarily like what you yourself can do, but you know, you know someone who knows another person who 
just happens to have the funds or the resources to be able to organize these things. So we reached out to hundreds of people to get our uh, to get money for our uh, like park permits and everything. Um, and you know sometimes this thing this stuff all takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. So just sticking with it and you know not giving up after that first barrier because we had a lot of politicians reject us. Um, <laughs> probably twice as many as that agreed to actually come so you know sometimes it's just persevering it's so inspiring to hear the amount of work that all of you have put into this um this next question it's related to social media so how have you and others around you leveraged tech or tools for online connectivity to organize and further your goals of environmental justice or maybe if there's any examples of cool projects that use any sort of technology to bring about environmental justice as well. For my uh, initiatives, we hadn't actually utilized our social media tools because it was a um, relatively small group working on the project. But for our upcoming projects, like promoting water reusable water bottle usage, while also talking about the the um, the negatives about using non reusable those plastic water bottles to and um, we're going to we're going to promote that by um, having posters around the school, but also on social media, like having my high school's Instagram page talk about these initiatives. We're also going to make sure that for past initiatives that they're also going to be spreading or that around the spreading that as well, so that students are more engaged and they're more uh, they 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 they're, they're more knowledgeable about what's happening in our high school and also the other, these other uh, high school pages of uh, of like the senior classes or. Um, other classes too, like our Google Classrooms, we have a class, uh, a classroom for each of the class years, the posting initiatives or projects uh, in those classrooms uh, in the future so for students to know what's happening in our high school so that they're more informed and they can also take part if students are interested or not, because right now, the lack of social media attention in my high school about the initiatives we're doing will, um, is, is a lot, and so this will hopefully mitigate the not not mitigate sorry this will hopefully increase the amount of particip participation we have in not only my organizations but other organizations in my high school as well um agnes if you wanted to read sophia's answer yes um she says definitely it's so mm. We definitely use Zoom a lot. We also use Instagram and TikTok, which is popular with our members. Social media is a powerful tool, powerful too. And we make sure to spread correct information to educate and, and inform our members and followers. We also use social media to promote our events and actions. Yeah, um, definitely. Like Sophia said, um, <laughs> Zoom has definitely been a huge, uh, played a huge role in all of uh, climate action this past year uh, in the year of COVID. Um, I honestly don't think I've had more than two or three in-person meetings for most of my organizations. They've all been over Zoom. Uh, and it's great because you can reach people, you know, all across California and all across the country and the world even. Um, and it's like you're in the same room. So it's great. Um, and then like she said as well, uh, you know, in using Instagram to promote uh, education and events. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of people heard about, you know, our rallies through social media and Instagram, stuff like that. Uh, so it's, you know, it's amazing how many people you can reach now nowadays. <laughs> yeah, as Teens Tech SF, that's something that we've definitely seen as well through using Zoom and social media platforms. We've been able to have like a far wider range of attendees from even different countries who usually wouldn't have been able to make it. So I want to say thank you all for coming here to join our panel and talk about your experiences and your work as youth leaders. I think that it's very important for other youth to hear about this as well so they know that there's steps that they can take and that they can make a difference too.